Hey guys, it's Griffin from the Retro Rebellion with uh, the Dope Sonar 930 on his channel here today. This is going to be my first video that I'm going to be making. Uh, I focus mostly on retro stuff. So today we're going to be taking a look at this Dreamcast I picked up on eBay for 15 bucks with two controllers, a VMU, all the cables and hookups and stuff. The only problem is sometimes it has a little bit of trouble reading discs, especially backups. So today we're going to be taking a look on how to recalibrate your Dreamcast's laser. So you're really only going to need a few things for this. Um, one being your broken Dreamcast. Uh, another being just a standard sized average screwdriver. Um, I also have these little picks that help unlock ribbon cables if they're in any sort of socket. And probably the most important part is a, a good multimeter. Um, I have done it with those cheap other Harbor Freight multimeters. Uh, it tends to work well, but they break real easy. So I just went, this is also a Harbor Freight multimeter. Uh, this was $20 instead of whatever, $2 like that other red one was. And this one has worked really well for the past probably about a year. And never had any problems with it. And I love it. It's, kind of, it's like a fluke imitation one. But. That's all you're going to need, so I'm going to go ahead and start opening up this Dreamcast, and I'll talk to you again when I get to the la laser assembly. Okay, so now we're at the laser assembly. Uh, it comes out really nice, the whole, the whole thing, because it is connected through a socket here instead of a ribbon cable, which I hadn't known. So we just put this aside, and it looks like this will just kind of pop up. You probably actually don't even need to. You actually don't even need to take this whole uh, assembly off if you feel confident working with it inside the shell, but. I like having it out so I can easily access a lot of the So I can easily access the parts and it just makes it easier, all right easier to take apart. Let's start by lifting up these little clips, pushing the wires out. I'll give us some more slack to work with with this wire. Definitely making sure that we do not bend or tear the moving cable that is connected. Um, I'm guessing the best tactic, just to avoid ripping this ribbon cable, is going to be taking off this bottom circuit board, which is probably, it looks like it's only held in by three screws, so I'm going to do that. Okay, so once you have your laser assembly out, um, it's probably going to be best to move this laser back. Be careful that you don't touch or scratch the actual eye of the laser. But if you just push, the laser assembly should move back fairly smoothly. Um, you might hear a little bit of crunching noise, but you shouldn't be worried about that. Then it allows you to, if you, gent if you do it gently, to... disconnect the, the, cape, the ribbon cable so you don't have to worry about damaging it. So 
So yep, I see the uh, little potentiometer over here. I'm gonna get you closer and maybe get a flashlight to make it more easier for you to see. I uh, see. So here we have the Dreamcast set on the 2K setting of the multimeter. And if we go back to our laser assembly, I'm going to be touching the bottom point on the side that has two points because the laser assembly is flipped because that's how I have it on the washcloth. And the point on the other side of the potentiometer. And you'll see that it reads about 1,000 ohms. So. That's generally what the stock setting for the Dreamcast is. The way this works is when you decrease the resistance, the laser eye tends to open up more. So, therefore making it easier for it to see the disc, but it also decreases the life of the laser. And I definitely fucked up doing an Xbox laser because I turned it too much to the right and then the laser got burnt out. So you're gonna be wanna be really careful with this if you do not have a multimeter. And you're just gonna to wanna to ever so gently give it probably about a tenth of a turn to the right when we're looking at it at this angle. So with that, if I go and measure and on the multimeter, Uh, I see that I, I'm around 700 ohms, and that is, I turned it even a little bit too much there. So we're going to want to turn it back until we've adjusted it probably about, I would say 10 or 20 ohms is a good point. Let's try it now. So, it's very time consuming to, to recalibrate one of these, and... But in the end, it's really worth it because your Dreamcast will run like new. So, there we go. I'm, around, I'm, I'm at around 950 ohms, and I dropped about 50 ohms from the starting ohm reading. And that may be a bit drastic, but it shouldn't be enough to harm the laser unit. So now we're just going to assemble everything back together and see how it works. As a closing statement, I'd just like to say I didn't actually end up tuning it enough, so I just decrease the resistance a little bit more and now it plays my homebrew Dreamcast games flawlessly. So thank you guys for watching. Hope this was helpful. <laughs>